Okay, good morning. Morning, morning Joe. All. And uh, morning. welcome to the planning committee on uh, Friday the 17th of July. The uh, first item on, on our agenda is, uh, are there any apologies for absence? We've had one at least. Yeah, from Councillor Richard Lewis, Charlie. Thank you. Um, then item two, any disclosures of personal and prejudicial interests? Are there any? No? Okay, thank you. So then we move on to item three, which is the uh, determination of the planning application <coughs> under the Permanent Country Planning Act of 1990, starting at page one all the way through to 198. Anyway, um, over to you, Andrew, is it? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, before I start, can I just please clarify that all members have received the update sheet with its attachments, please? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we have. Right. Anyone else? Yes. Right. Thank you. Um, in that case, as I said, um, I'm not going to go through all the updates in great detail. Um, I'll go through the, the key ones uh, just so you're all aware. Um, and as I said, I'm not going to go through the little corrections, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start with number one, which is that uh, Councillor Fitzgerald has written into the Chief Executive to request that this application is deferred to allow members to visit the site and enable members of the public to address committee in person. Obviously, as everyone's aware, the coronavirus pandemic has had significant impact on the ability of local planning authorities in Wales to carry out normal business. In response to this pandemic, Welsh Government has introduced legislation to allow local authorities to continue business which would otherwise not be possible, and this includes planning committees. Uh, this is the third planning committee to take place remotely in light of these changes. The ward member will address committee herself, uh, and members of the public have, had, have been consulted on the application three times to date. Uh, in January 2019, in November 2019, and again in March 2020. Uh, this has resulted in approximately 700 objections to the scheme, as noted and addressed in the committee report. Residents have also been given a further opportunity to provide any new comments they wish following the production of the report, uh, as you'll see in update number two, um, and members of the public can view committee online live or at a later date if they wish. So officers will provide a comprehensive presentation to members on the site in its context. Uh, committee will then be able to decide whether they consider a site visit is necessary before determination. Um, if Just to make members aware, if the application is deferred, it would be at the applicant's discretion whether they wish to appeal against non-determination. Um, the planning dis uh, inspectorate pins could decide to award costs against the council to cover an, any unnecessary and costs incurred by the applicant in appealing the decision if they considered that the council had acted unreasonably. Um, committee were advised of three number uh, additional letters of objection received from one address, details of which were circulated prior to committee. Uh, as I said, I have spoken directly with the residents and responded to their concerns, but obviously so you're aware of them, you have had them, you have had them. And in addition, a presentation pack has been sent in by Pentlegare Community Council, which has also been circulated to members with the update sheet. Members were also provided with a brief uh, members brief impact, which has been prepared by the applicant uh, to give a brief overview of the proposals and the key considerations of the applicant of the application as the applicant sees them. Um, in terms of the application, this should have been included in the report, but the Welsh ministers have received a call in request on this application, which is currently under consideration, and they have issued a direction that the authority cannot grant permission for this development without the prior authorisation of the Welsh Ministers. The direction prevents the Council only from granting permission. It does not prevent the Council from continuing to process or consult on the application or resolving to approve the application if members do decide that way. Neither does it prevent the Council from refusing planning permission uh, and the Ministers aim to determine calling requests within 21 days of the receipt of the report, which was sent as soon as the agenda was finalised. Um, when we go through the presentation, I will point this out again, uh, but there is one thing that needs to be clarified in the report. The final paragraph of section 7.8 on page 119 states that the site is an allocated site. Uh, it should be clarified that the application site also includes land within the green wedge where policy ER3 is applicable and a landscape protection area where policy ER5 is applicable. 
Um, the proposed development parcels, as indicated on the illustrative master plan, generally avoid the green wedge landscape protection designations and would be subject to reserve matters applications to consider the final detail layout at a subsequent stage. However, the A484 link, which we'll come on to, and the active travel route 14 would run through both of these de designations. Policies ER3 and ER5 seek to protect the openness of the Green Wedge and ensure proposals do not have a significant adverse effect on the character and quality of the landscape of the county. Uh, in the first instance, these links are essential and integral requirements of the site allocation, and it is accepted that this infrastructure would run through these areas as shown in the concept plan. In addition, it's not considered that proposals would impact on the openness of the Green Wedge, nor significantly adversely affect the character and quality of the landscape. The road would be subject of a future reserve matters application and landscaping would be required to provide additional screening. But in principle, the inclusion of the local transport infrastructure is considered acceptable. Uh, policy CV2 development in the countryside permits the development of necessary infrastructure provision, such as this required transport infrastructure, subject to the integrity of the countryside being conserved and enhanced, which we consider it is. So a summary of the two policies that were excluded from the report, ER3 and CV2 are attached to the appendix along with an exit of the LDP, which as I said, I will go through on my presentation. Um, one amendment is required in the planning obligation section of the report in 7.27 in the first bullet point, which relates to affordable housing. Uh, as drafted, this says this will be disposed of via a registered social landlord. This should be either via a registered social landlord or the council to provide the council the opportunity to take on the affordable housing if needs be. Um, three conditions, condition 15, 47 and 65 have been amended in light of comments and just to clarify some errors. Um, and yeah, and I'll start the presentation now and go through um, the proposal. So, as you can all see, uh, if we've got a site on the screen, um, this application is a hybrid application. Um, it's been reported to planning committee as it's a major development and the application is accompanied by an environmental statement. So, as noted in the description, it's a hybrid application with outline permission to sort for a, a residential led mixed use development for up to 850 dwellings, a primary school, local centre, community facilities, associated open space and highways infrastructure. And the outline element of the site is indicated in red with the field boundaries in light grey uh, and other land in the applicant's control in blue. Um, so in addition to this, full permission is sought for the construction of phase 1A for 184 dwellings with access off Bryn Ross Crescent, um, along with the demolition of various buildings such as 31 Gorsinian Road and various outbuildings of Park Mower. So phase 1A on, on your screen is the red edge site on the eastern side of the site. The application was submitted in December 2018 before the LDP was formally adopted and has undergone significant discussion and amendments during this time. Uh, the site is an allocated site in the LDP for circa 644 dwellings during the plan period, although the amplification does acknowledge that it would deliver up to 850 dwellings in total beyond the plan period. So the application site covers an area of approximately 79.6 79 hectares of land situated behind properties on Gorsinan Road, which runs to the north of the site, uh, and Swansea Road um, extending approximately 1.65 kilometres to the south. For your context, uh, you have the A483, which is the dual carriageway running along the eastern side of the boundary up to junction 47 of the M4 in the top right hand corner, and the A484 runs along the southern boundary of the site with Manith Gangoch common land to the west and Swansea Road A4042 to the north. So if you can go on to slide two, please, Ian. Thank you. So this is a, an aerial image from Google Maps of the site with an LDP exit in the top right. So again, you can see the three key roads bordering the site to the north, east and south with junction 47 in the top right hand corner, along with the various residential areas that comprise Pentlegare. Uh, Park Mile Farm is located within the centre of the site and Bryn David Farm is located further south. So on, on the map there to the west of the site, you've got Gangork Industrial Estate. Um, you can see that the site comprises largely agricultural land with one farmhouse located in it and its associated outbuildings. Um, the farm is accessed from Swansea Road with a single track road with mature hedgerow boundaries on either side. 
There is a public right of way located on the land to the west of the site, which travels in a north-south direction before traveling east across the southern portion of the site where the axis would be for, to the A484. Uh, and between the fields of pasture, definition and enclosures provided through a variety of means included hedges with and without hedgerow trees, fences and clothia, which are stone-built walls with an earth and rubble core, often topped with a hedge, a local um, characteristic. So phase 1A is located on the eastern side of the northern half of the site, the rear of properties on Swansea Road, Brindary Close, Brynross Crescent and Penna Bryn. Um, so in terms of the LDP excerpt, as I explained in the update note, the red is the actual site allocation and the green area comprises the green wedge and landscape protection designation where the active travel link to the south and the A484 link would travel through. If you can go to the next slide, please, Ian. Uh, this is uh, an LDP, this is the concept plan from the LDP. Um, the development has largely followed this. There's a couple of exceptions, but I'll just talk you through this very briefly. So the local centre is in the northeastern corner of the site, shown in pink uh, with a circle around it, uh, with the school in the northwestern corner of the site, shown in yellow. Um, obviously, the green on there is a green fringe along the western boundary, and the ready brown colours are the various parcels for development with green corridors retained throughout. Um, there are two key changes from the concept plan, which are the provision of two pitches on the site now, rather than the upgrade to the drainage of the pitch on Gorsai and Common. And no um, highway improvements are proposed on junction 47 uh, of the M4. As I said, the LDP policy says whether these are required and, as I said, following consideration of the application, we don't consider that to be the case. Uh, in terms of the former, as I said, there are no changing rooms or parking facilities on the Gorse Common and it is common land. So improvements would provide little additional benefit for formal play provision, which is why the um, pitches have been, two pitches have been located on the site. And as I said, uh, when we pass you over to Steve, he will show you where those are. So in terms of the highways, uh, Junction 47 modelling has indicated that the development would not exacerbate the situation on Junction 47 significantly in the short term. Uh, and as I said, I'm sure Matt will respond to any queries on the highways impact later on. So LD policy uh, SDC provides the site specific strategic policy context for the site and outlines the key placemaking principles and development requirements for the site which are all assessed in the committee report in detail. And as you can see, uh, the strategic link to the, th to the south is clearly shown on here. So if you can go to the next slide, please, Ian. Um, you'll see on that, as I said, there are four colour arrows. Uh, it's the same aerial location, but with the location of the future access points marked on. So the blue arrow denotes access from Brynross Crescent into phase 1A. This phase would be accessed via Swansea Road up from the old Inn roundabout. The yellow arrow at the top uh, denotes the location of the primary access to the development from the north. This access would necessitate the demolition of number 31 Gorsangen Road and would be provided to serve phase 1B prior to occupation of unit 185 and the actual design would be subject to separate reserve matters consent. The orange arrow denotes further a future access link from Gorsangen Road through to the A483 on the eastern side of the site. This would be provided prior to the occupation of the 350th dwelling. And again, the access itself would be subject to a separate reserve, map, reserve matters application. And the grey arrow denotes a future access to the A484 on the southern side of the site. Uh, this will be provided prior to the occupation of the 644th dwelling. So within the plan period and again would be subject to reserve matters consent. So if you can go to the next slide, please, Ian. This shows the location of the access um, from Brynross Crescent, which is roughly shown uh, where the blue arrow is, uh, and a Google uh, street view basically showing on the right hand side showing the access. Um, if you can see on the left hand side, the farm access lane denotes the northern extent of phase 1A, and the southern hedge at the bottom of the screen denotes the southern field boundary for phase 1A. So it should be noted that uh, not all of the fields are in phase 1A, the western side are omitted for subsequent stages. Uh, if we can go on to the next one, please, Ian. 
Um, I'm just going to fly through uh, some very quick um, screenshots, basically, and then I'll show you some photographs as well. But this is um, the axis from Brynros Crescent looking towards the, the white buildings you can see are the farm buildings. So you can see the fields here and the trees along and within the site. Uh, if you go to the next one, please, Ian. Um, this is a view of uh, the Park Mower Farm access off Swansea Road. So that's the existing access which forms the northern boundary of phase 1A. Uh, the track would be used as an active travel link for this phase for pedestrians and cyclists to access Pentelagare uh, and get back into Pentelagare, basically. Uh, if you can go to the next one, please, Ian. This is a view across the site um, from Kloss Timaur, opposite the ent entrance to Broadwood. Uh, the develop that Broadwood development is on the left-hand side of the screen, and you're looking southwest across phase 1A. The road straight ahead is the old Swansea Road, so you would have five dwellings fronting onto this road. And as I said, you, you can see uh, where the highway demarcation is between the, the two grassed areas. This would be formed, uh, this would be a pavement would be provided here going forward uh, to provide active travel links into the site. If you can go to the next slide, please, Ian. So these are four photographs basically of the site, uh, phase 1A. It's a view across the northern end of phase 1A. So in the top left hand corner, you have a view northwest towards the farm from Brynross Crescent. So it's very similar to the school street view uh, I just showed. You can see a small uh, hedgerow boundary in the, in the middle distance, um, which would be lost as part of this development. In the top right hand corner, you have the rear of properties on Brinderry Close uh, on the left hand side and properties backing onto from Brynross Crescent on the right. And the axis will be somewhere through the middle of those. In the bottom right hand corner, again, you've got the rear of properties on the north of Brinderry Close with a hedge along the boundary. Uh, that hedge would be retained. And the bottom left is a view basically next to that one in the, in the bottom right, which is a view of the rear of properties fronting onto Swansea Road. Again, is a hedge in between the site uh, and those properties which would be retained. Um, if you can go to the next one, please, Ian. As I said, this is the southern half of phase 1A. So in the top left hand corner, you've got a view of properties on Broadwood along the eastern boundary of the site. So they're on the opposite side of the old Swansea Road uh, and they are approximately 17 and a half metres away from single storey conservatories to the nearest part of the site. In the top right, you've got properties on Brynross Crescent directly looking onto the site. As you can see, they've all got balconies uh, and the one on the far end has a single storey rear projection. In the bottom right, you've got a view across the fields towards the rear of the properties on Prenner Bryn Close and Bryn Ross Crescent looking northeast again. And then in the bottom left, you've got a view south towards the existing hedgeline to be retained. So as you said, you know, these are agricultural fields with various field boundaries in between. Um, you can go to the next slide, please, Ian. So number 11 uh, shows the property with a red roof. Uh, and the blocked up windows is uh, number 131 Gorsinan Road. This is the property to be demolished to make way for the northern access, which would be undertaken prior to the first beneficial occupation of the 185th dwelling. In the top right hand corner, you can see an, an aerial view of the layout. Um, the road in front is an access road in front of the crescent shaped island um, with the uh, Gorsinan Common on the opposite side of the road. And go to the next one, please, Ian. Um, this is a view of the northern part of the site. So if you look at the top in the central, just behind the back of the grey arrow, there's a red roof property. That is number 31, Gorsinan Road. Um, uh, that is where the northern axis will be. And the top right, indicated in the blue arrow, is a view northeast towards the trees in the northern corner of the site. In the bottom right uh, in the grey arrow is a view across the southern boundary uh, with the hedgerow demarcating the northern edge of the site. This is going to be sort of looking onto what will be the school grounds in the future. Uh, and the bottom left is the yeah, in the yellow arrow is a view across the fields in front of Parkmire Farmhouse towards the rear of properties on Swansea Road. Um, phase 1A is to the south of the access lane beyond that arrow. So this is, uh, this is in the outline element rather than the detailed element. If you go to the next one, please, Ian. This is the middle portion of the site. So the two fields to the right of the back of the blue arrow are phase 1A. Um, in the top right, uh, the grey arrow is a view across the western fields towards uh, 3M. You can see the tower 
uh, which is a bit visible above the tree line. Some views would obviously be possible from these area back towards the site. The bottom right is the yellow arrow taken with a view uh, over the existing hedge along the left hand side towards the Laka estuary. Again, you can see the 3M tower on the right hand side. So what you can see there, obviously those areas would be able to see the site looking back. Um, and the bottom left, uh, uh, bottom left is the blue arrow, which just shows the fields and you can see some of the existing trees on site and some of the hedgerow boundaries. If we can go to the next one, please, Ian. This is the last one on, on, the, on the site, just to give you a bit more of a flavour, but this is the southern end of the site, um, uh, proposed for development with Old Swansea Road. Um, you can see and the A483 on the right side of the aerial view and the A484 on the bottom end. Um, note the copse of trees, it's a circular uh, copse of trees in one of the fields on the left-hand side, which would be retained. So again, just more sites, uh, more views across the site. These are looking down into two parcels in the top right, the blue arrow, um, which provides the southern extent of the development. In the bottom right, we've got the grey arrow looking northwest over fields as they rise up. Um, and in the bottom middle, uh, again, it, the sun isn't great in this one, but it's the yellow arrow is towards Bryn David Farm, which is outside of the application site to the south. Um, with the cops of trees to be retained on the right hand side of the photo. So if you've got a next one, please, Ian. Um, this is the last slide for me before I hand over to Steve. Um, this just shows the demolition. So this is performs part of the detailed element of the proposals. In addition to the demolition of number 31 Gorsinian Road, the applicant is proposing to demolish the um, buildings there with the green outline and the hatching in and the blue ones are to be retained. Um, they'll be used for community purposes going forward. Um, you can see the buildings to be retained on the left hand side, which are the, the, the solid built buildings. With the top one is Park Mara Farmhouse uh, with its various outbuildings. And the bottom one building four is an annex outbuilding opposite pa Park Mara Farmhouse. So these would be retained for community use. The buildings on the right hand side are um, obviously traditional, uh, typical agricultural buildings of little architectural merit and would be demolished as part of this proposal. So I'm going to hand over to Steve now and then when he's finished pre his presentation, I'm just going to mop up at the end. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. OK, okay um, um, thank you, Andrew. Um, the, the, there's, oh, there's a bit of a lag. Um, so um, the, 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 the starting slide for me is just a reminder of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, which applies to all public bodies in Wales. So this is just a reminder of the seven goals on the graphic there in English and Welsh, um, which I won't, I won't read out, but we'll, we'll all know about them. And the key, the key thing to, to get across is that we all hear us talking a lot about placemaking, uh, both in terms of our local development plan, in terms of planning policy Wales, and placemaking is the holistic approach to planning that allows planning to deliver the goals of the Future Generations Act. So, pl so, so placemaking is kind of is the mechanism for making sure we have this step change um, in terms of everything we do in planning and raise it, raising the quality of these places we um, we create. So, if we can go onto the slide 17, please. So as you heard before, obviously the, 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 the local planning authority has sought to lead placemaking strategically in the local development plan through the creation of these various concept plans for the strategic sites. There's a range of strategic sites and we're talking about this SDC site today in Pentelige You've heard about sort of some of the key features because what, what, what the um, concept plan seeks, seeks to do is um, give an idea of where things should be on site before the developer started their design process. So rather than it just being a blank red line, and almost anything goes or completely open to negotiation. We, from the very outset, set that if there is going to be a new, new local centre on this site, um, shop, community retail, higher density and a school, it should be in the north. So it's so it's kind of accessible to the new community and highly accessible to the existing community because there is a lack of centre as such in Pentagon as it stands. The idea of a spine street as a place, a place for living, a place for houses to face onto, not a fast traffic dominated bypass. And another key aspect of the sort of scene setting in the local development plan for this concept is the strong in integration of green infrastructure so green corridors through the site extensive like you'll see from the red line of the site extensive areas retained as green space effectively retained landscape with all the copses and hedges pretty much kept as they are and managed with public access because the key thing to note is there's no public access apart from down that far western side so at the moment this is an inaccessible area of green space and this project com completely opens that up as well as these um 
um, the new housing development. So if we can go on to um, number 18. So there's an extensive suite of supporting documents all on the public website, um, some of which have been superseded a number of times as discussions have progressed. There's a very well illustrated um, design and access statement, which is the key document for placemaking on this application. Um, and there's a couple of extracts here. The main thing to note on the left hand plan, which shows the red line of the sites with the various points that Andrew would have mentioned about the you know, Pentelegare to, to the north um, and um, east and the various landscape is it is the the ground falls roughly from east it falls down to west so the east is the higher part of the site pretty much along Swansea Road almost was running along a ridge historically and it falls down towards the west down towards the common land you can see the various you know, markings of where sort of the good hedges are where the um, landscape protection areas are typically up in the northwestern part of the site um, and the two farms that we've mentioned um, the the image on the right is just an extract from the um, the landscape and visual impact appraisal that's been undertaken that informs the design and access statement, which just shows the understanding of the fit of the site in the landscape. So as Andrew mentioned, there's views to the west um, towards Gosainon um, the, with the 3M plant. And conversely, from the west in those Gosainon areas, you will look back towards this site, which forms part of this kind of urban fringe environment. So that's, that's that one. So slide 19, please. Um, and so, so what we have here on the left is the indicative master plan. So the, the subsequent slides I'm going to talk you through explain the master plan. The key thing to note, this is indicative. This shows how this new place could be structured, um, you know, as a diagram look at, looking from above. Um, there's the key things to note is it's 850 homes. Um, the layout is in conformity with the local development plan concept plan we showed you before um, and at the 850 homes there's potentially a community of 1900 people um, with a mixture of housing types from apartments to houses so, so young people um, downsizers and um, family so full, full range of community potentially on this site um, you've heard we'll talk to you some more about the local center in the north the green corridors development zones with walkable streets and all those sorts of things so, so left is the indicative master plan on the right is the phasing plan which is quite important because part part of the latter presentation is the first reserve matters for what's called phase 1a which is shown in purple there we go someone's pointing at that and then the, and then the way the development is expected to progress from there is to go the subsequent phase after that will be the local center and the spine street so moving north um, so that's the second phase and then the third phase will be going down sort of along filling in along the spine street heading south um, which is the sort of pinky areas and then the yellow areas would be the fourth phase which includes the school um, some of the ecological areas on the west um, some community allotments and then finally the final phase is the very southern phase down towards um, Brindavid Farm and the Southern Southern Link Road. So that so that's kind of the the expected phasing, and there's all the trigger points for the various um, community infrastructure elements um, in the Section 106 agreement. So if we can go on to the next slide, please. So slide 20 starts to give a good overview of the site um, in terms of police making. And what comes across um, very strongly is the extensive integrated, what we call green infrastructure, so that you've got the new pitches there in the centre of the site, the various green corridors. Um, and it's sort of like, obviously, this is diagrammatic, but an expl explanation of scale of the houses. This is looking approximately from the south west, looking back up towards the existing kind of settlement area of um, Pentelegare. So the, then the new local centre is very much in, in the sort of upper left. There we go in the left there. So this is a good, a good, good overview and there's lots more slides to come. So 21, please. Um, as, as a development of 850 homes, it's imperative that it's split into different character areas because what, what we certainly wouldn't want to see is a site is a site where everything feels the same and that has been a problem with developments in the past in Swansea we haven't really had developments at this scale before but often even in modest sized developments pretty much every house is using the same brick and same character um, and that's a completely missed opportunity to, to give a sense of identity to a place so for 850 houses it splits roughly into three character zones so we've got the local center and spine street in purple We've got the kind of what's called park edge area in green, which wraps around to the south and the west. So where the sort of development meets the countryside. And then we've got the area called Brimross 
back across on the east, which is very much trying to pick up pick up more on kind of the the recent development character of Pentlinger. And there's some there's some slides on each of these coming up next. So twenty two, please. So twenty two, and reminding that this is all indicative, explaining how this master plan can work. Um, twenty two shows how the local centre could be structured with in the light blue, the kind of L-shaped or upside down L, um, L-shaped area there that's been highlighted is the potential local centre facilities, which could be community retail, approximately seven or so units with residential above, um, centred onto a, a green space, village green type area with retained mature vegetation. On the left hand side of that there, on the west side, potentially it, will, it would be the location of the new school there, highlighted there. And running through the center center of that would be the new Spine Street, which you know certainly will not be a bypass and will be a tree lined street with verges. And at this location, I'd expect it to be traffic calmed down to twenty miles an hour. So it's a cohesive place where the community can um, get to get to the school there. So we go into the next twenty three, please. Twenty three is a just is a indicative sort of 3D visual of how this area could look. You can see all those same components again, the local centre shops, which you know may have gables. It, it shows it's, it's potentially three storeys high, but you know, wouldn't be dominant in the location and, and is an appropriate urban scale for a local centre to make best use of the facilities and accessibility. You see the green space, you see the mature trees, you see the school over there to the left, and an indication of the surrounding higher density um, housing developments around that and also the way the spine street comes through um, with the tree lined areas. Um, next slide please, 24. So 24 um, shows an image of what the new school could potentially look like. A fair amount of work has gone into designing the school to sort of check it would work with the, the site that well, the right size of school could fit on that part of the site with its frontage facing east onto the spine street and the pitch is running away to the west side which is uh, kind of abutting the kind of sensitive ecological areas so that's the likely con configuration of the school on the site um 25 please so running south in this character area this is what the spine street could look like um so, so it would be potentially three-storey contemporary townhouses. There, you can see the sketch graphic on the on the right-hand side, um, and the the sort of three D visual shows a continuation of the verges, the trees, and the key thing to stress: this is a living place. A number of our strategic sites have spine streets where it's managing traffic within the environment. Um, there's a national document for England and Wales called Manual for Streets, and it's all about balancing the movement and the place. So this is very much a living place, certainly not a bypass. So there will be traffic. Um, but it will be calmed down and people will be living alongside that traffic in a, in a, a positive place. 26, please. 26 is now the park edge character area, which was the area wrapping around to the sort of south and west of the site where the development meets the landscape. Again, in this visual here in the 3D, you can see the pictures um, and there's an indication of what the houses could be like, typically sort of two storey, um, more traditional houses looking out over the landscape. Um, and sort of a lower lower density area. Um, 27, please. So 27 was the Brim Ross character area back to the east of the site, which is very much looking to pick up on the existing character of the modern parts of Pentlinger um, and weaving in the kind of um, hedges as new green corridors. So keeping some of those green assets of the site. Um, 28, please. So 28, this is, this is um, the green infrastructure slide, and, and I think it's important to note that green infrastructure is an important priority for the council and nationally. It, in the past, maybe would have been called landscape, and it would have maybe been to, into considerations of ecology. But what green, the term green infrastructure brings together is an idea is everything is linked and it's multifunctional. Um, and so all the, the negotiations on these strategic sites have helped officers really understand exactly how this can be applied at all scales. So at the landscape scale, green infrastructure is the retention of these extensive areas down the western side of the site. Um, the, the ecologically sensitive areas and the lower slopes. And so, so there's, there's a lot of it is setting the site into its landscape. At the neighbourhood scale, green infrastructure is the areas that you know, the community will primarily use. So it's the parks, it's the pitches, it's the green corridors. 
And then even getting down into some of the later slides I'll show you, it's at the street level. So it's getting planting and verges into the streets. So they're not feeling harsh and car dominated. And then even down to the individual plots in terms of some of the things that can be done there. Okay. So and the, you know, the, the whole point of the multifunctionality of green infrastructure is it does so many positive things. Um, it deals with water management. It helps enhance ecology. It helps address microclimate, both wind and shade and all those sorts of things. Um, it helps the community, both the existing and new community, have areas for exercise, um, outdoor space, play, um, and you know certainly just the ability to live amongst the green space and have the access to the green space is a key element of well-being. And we're increasingly obviously bringing that these terminologies of well-being and health into planning. And you can see from all the green infrastructure and hedges and various corridors that you've got that proximity to nature in this site. Um, 29, please. Again, this is this is just showing that green infrastructure in the site. This is the, the two new pitches in the center of the site. Um, with the green corridor on the left hand side, potentially a water management area with um, a, a, a drainage ditch. Um, there's new structural tree planting, there's retained vegetation, there's street trees, there's play provision, which I'll come on to one of the later plans. So that just starts to show how the green infrastructure is an integral part of this new place. Um, 30, please. So streets are also key places within the new neighborhoods. And what this plan here shows, is, is what we call the hierarchy of the streets with the new spine streets in the dark blue running sort of from Gosinum Road in the north all the way down to the A484 in the south and then branching off in the middle of the site to the A483. So they're the main movement routes. The sort of um, pinky, uh, pe peachy colour is the um, secondary circulation within the site. And then the yellow colour are the sort of the more muse lane type street areas. And this is supplemented by extensive um, pedestrian and cycle routes, which aren't shown on this plan, which I'll, I'll come on to later. The graphic on the right hand side just starts to show how each of those street types will have a certain scale of buildings, depending on where it is within the development. And they've all got greening in those streets. So that's really important. That's a real step change to what we've been seeing in Swansea, even in recent developments, that every street will have either a, a grass verge on the secondary street on one side um, or a a build out with a tree at certain intervals within the yellow streets, the muse streets and the spine street is lined on both sides by um, some verges. So it's a positive integration of greening into our street environments. Um, slide 31, please. So before I start talking about these, it's just important to remind that all the, the previous few slides have been explaining the indicative master plan. So that's the kind of concept for the place to be created. And what they what, what they prove is that it's a well crafted um, and robust master plan. So 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 that that makes a lot of sense getting to that point. And the next slides are what's called the parameters plans. So that master plan is sound. And these next set of plans actually or plans or diagrams form the basis of the guidance for future reserve matters and what these do these fix certain things and they provide flexibility in other areas and they deal with different um, themes or different elements um, of, of, of the place and what's then required is the reserve matters of which one of there's one of the phases of reserve matters at the end of this presentation each phase of reserve matters is required to comply or substantially accord is the key wording with these diagrams for creating that new place so the left hand plan there is the land use parameter plan and that fixes these things I've, we've been talking about about the local center in the north which is a kind of pinky color there the school location on the opposite side of the road um, it fixes the kind of the housing development zones in that very kind of light light yellow which is one to four bed houses on those different areas it fixes all that retained and protected landscape all the green areas down the west side um, and it um, protects, it, it designates like a community zone around the um, retained park mower farm vernacular buildings. So that shows where development primarily sh can and can't go and you know what kind of development can go where. The plan on the right is the density of homes um, within the sort of the darker, darker orange colour. Higher development there in the north of the site around the local centre and some other higher density kind of nodes as we've called at key points and key spaces and key junctions. Um, 
medium density in the bulk of the site, which is the kind of middle orange, and then lower densities um, both on the sensitive southern and western rural edge and lower densities on the kind of interface with existing um, development on the east side as well. And so, so that's kind of how many houses kind of per hectare or how many dwellings, sorry, per hectare could go into those zones, um, which is obviously supported to get most people living close to the local centre where it's better facilities and there's public transport available. Um, slide 32, please. Slide 32, um, the image or the parameter plan on the left is what we call sort of design focus areas. So the idea that the kind of sort of the, the key architecture will be focused around those red circles, which are the, the key sort of spaces in this new development, the village green at the local center and, and other, other spaces working south. The kind of yellow line around the edges of the gray blocks are, the, are what's called the key frontages <clears throat> where they look onto the open spaces where there would be architectural uplifts so you know, we have to remember that this is a development by a mass house builder who will have a range of standard houses and it's knowing where those standard houses need to be improved and uplifted to really give a good quality of place and then the red asterisks and various dots are where you'd have the really key buildings such as the school which would be an architectural bespoke design um, and other key corners so that starts to show where the kind of architectural emphasis and the quality should be focused um, the, the one the image on the right hand side is building heights which kind of links to density but just shows you'd have predominantly two to three story to say two and a half to three story buildings around the local center and running down the spine street in the darker purple um predominantly the main body of the site is two story with occasional two and a half story in the sort of the mid purple and the lighter purple around the sort of north and eastern side is two story only to deal with that sensitive edge onto existing properties um, existing residential gardens so that just starts to show how tall the buildings can be in those different settings um sl slide 34 please Slide 34 is quite a lot going on here, but this is the access and movement parameter plan. So it's not, this isn't really focusing on private cars getting into every plot. This is looking at pr primarily walking and cycling and public transport. So you've got the Spine Street, which would also be what we call an active travel route. So a three meter wide footway cycleway um, down one side. So that's your strategic cycling um, to move around the site. You've also got secondary cycle routes within the site. You've got movement within the parcels and you know lots and lots of walking loops and links. You've got sort of green routes out into the countryside, which you know in the in the current COVID lockdown, access to local green space has been so important. Um, and this sort of arrangement would open up this site for you know new residents and existing residents to get into all these areas and bearing in mind you've got the common land just beyond on the west so that opens up all sorts of other access opportunities the the big circles that kind of just go off the plan um the dotted blue circles are the um potential walking catchments for bus stops so this new spine street would have a would be a public transport route as well with with, with a bus stop certainly in the local center and one further south which covers pretty much all the site for bus, bus accessibility which then links into existing bus routes heading down into swansea city center or other transport or working destinations working with bus providers there um 34 please So this goes back to green infrastructure, the kind of um, protected areas um, for green corridors, um, the landscape areas. Um, and also to note is there is a certain amount of hedges to be removed to facilitate this development. So there will, there will be compensatory replanting of hedges in these kind of retained areas of strengthening the landscape and managing it more positively. Um, the image on the right is the play hierarchy plan. I think it's important to state that this isn't just play for kids because play you know, can be multi-generational. So you've got your recognized traditional hierarchy of different kinds of parks, which are shown in the, the different circles. There's a major neighborhood park in the center alongside the pitches. There's also the idea of um, pr proposed a, what's called a trim trail. So that's like a series of exercise stations or activity stations running along a route heading out to the countryside, a bit like sort of facilities on Swansea Prom maybe. Um, there's also opportunities for community allotments um, and the retained farm buildings that would have a community use um, as well and plus also a potential BMX track for kind of tea, well, not, not tea teens but just for anyone who wants to ride their bike in a, in a safe way um, but not within the body of the site which is the orange asterisk there that we go so there's a whole range of positive play provision for all generations 
It also links into a public art strategy, which potentially could repurpose um, items from the site, such as boulders and logs and various things to create informal play seating, sculptures and all sorts of things like that, which could involve community participation to even form them in the first instance. So these parameters plans certainly set the, you know, they take the master plan, the indicative master plan that I showed you before, turn it into a series of diagrams for a very um, sustainable, a very healthy, a very positive new, new place. So if we can go on to the next slide. Um, and they effectively form like the, the blueprint, which has some flexibility because they are supported by a series of written principles, which are in the design and access statement. And every phase of detail, which I'm just going to come on to now, is required to, to accord with those diagrams. So this is back to now the sort of last couple of slides for the um, first reserve matters phase for 184 houses, which is being highlighted there. So that shows where the first phase sits within the whole site. Remembering that within that red line of the whole site, a lot of the area on the west is being kept as green open space, but we're going to focus on what's called phase, phase 1A now. So we can click onto 36, please. So this is the detail now of phase 1A which conforms with the layout strategy of those various parameters plans. So it doesn't include the Spine Street, but it's everything up to the Spine Street between the existing development of Pentlegare, the Brimross Crescent area across to the back of properties that will future be the Spine Street. The access is off Brimross Crescent. We just let somebody highlight the access point off Brimross Crescent. Um, there we go. So there's the access point there, which comes in past an open space area with a local area for play. The secondary street networks running south down through the site, down to two retained hedge corridors in the south, which become strategic green corridors, which are the active travel links, which in future, the new pitches that I showed you will be further to the west in future phases. So that gives you an idea of how this kind of fit, fits into um, <clears throat> all that. So there's a mixture um, of um, housing of uh, apartments, um, two-story walk-up apartments, up to four stories, up to four bedroom houses. Sorry, all arranged with street frontage. Most of the parking is tucked down the side. Um, there's a few um, parking courts, but uh, sorry, not but there's a few frontage parking areas, but generally the parking is not dominant. And the key thing to note is you can see lots of green dots, which are trees. Um, and this brings in the green infrastructure to the street level. So this has got um, street trees, green verges, and um, what we call green infrastructure build outs in the lane new streets to the south there. So even if you don't live overlooking a green space, the likelihood is every house will have a, a direct or oblique view um, of a tree. So if we could go on to the next. So as I mentioned before, the site does fall from east to west. This part of the site isn't you know, very steep at all, but this starts to give an idea of what that level change across the site could be. It's also important to note that sections A, B and G show relationships to existing properties. So A shows, again, we're highlighting there, those three relationships to those existing properties where uh, these are these relationships have been assessed and are considered to be acceptable. So we've got the existing properties shown in the very kind of um, basic white outline there and the new development shown um, with a bit more detail. So the separations, the orientation, um, all in accordance with our um, residential design guide. If we can go on to 38, please. So as you as you would expect, expect for 184 houses, there's a there's a you know a whole plethora of individual house type drawings which don't make much sense individually. So you know we we're not going to show you the individual house types, but what we can show you is what's called the street scenes, where they're all put together as proper arrangements that represent the site. Um, and this is really important to understand how it hangs, it comes together as a as a place, how the different houses look next door to each other, that some of these houses are, are affordable housing and they are architecturally well integrated. So just, just to sort of talk you through, the top, the top street scene, um, elevation AA, is the elevation onto the um, old farm lane, which is in the very north of the site. So that farm lane, as we heard before, will be retained as an active travel link, um, taking you out to Swansea Road into the existing and Pentagare community. So those houses, the sort of those, you know, northern gateway houses, let's call them that. So some are two and a half storey, majority are two storey. You'll see that gables form quite a strong linking theme through these. Um, elevation BB is, the, is looking, um, 
onto the west side of the secondary street running south through the site. So that's a long street elevation. Um, and what you see in that view there is again repeating gables that form, give it continuity and character, um, and the street greening with those trees. So that, that's where we've got the green infrastructure into the street. Um, elevation DG is down into the um, the first of the green corridors. So that's looking onto a, where a, re a retained hedge has been kept within a green space there, which is an uplift area, which has got more of, the, of a, like a reconstituted stone. Um, so the mixture of materials, you've got render, you've got some red brick, and in the uplift area is some stonework, and we have feature chimneys and things like that. Um, and that that set that elevation DD onto that key green corridor includes affordable housing. So the affordable housing isn't just architecturally well integrated; it's also integrated into the really positive places of the development. Um, so that so those houses have got equal green outlook um, to the private houses. And finally, elevation E at the very bottom of the page is onto the um, drainage open space in the south west of the site there we go so that's looking onto a key open space and those drainage areas just to say they will be dry for the majority of the year there'll be shallow gradients going in so they can be used as informal recreation areas um, i imagine you could kick a football round on them and those sorts of things there'll be like a wetland meadow grass that you you could access them but at times of heavy rainfall they will fill up temporarily while it just holds the water to, to, to just let it drain out slowly back into the network um if we could go to 39 please. so 39 is a bit of this is um yeah, this is pretty much the last one 39 is an example is a zoomed in example of the house type character especially in the uplift areas so as i said before the, this is a yeah, Bel bellway homes as, as a mass house builder so they will have standard house types and they have worked very positively with us to uplift those house types these are you know fairly traditional um other phases in this site will be more contemporary but this shows onto some of those key um, green frontages those key green spaces how the houses will be uplifted by more window details a kind of a, a good quality slate effect roof um, the use of this reconstituted stone, which references the local stonework buildings, um, use of what's called instant hedging. So that often with these housing developments, the frontages can appear very open and very sparse and take a while to establish. And these come in like ready grown hedges. Um, and the stone buildings, just to mention, will have sage green windows. It's a very small thing, but is a significant difference to your sort of standard white UPVC windows. Every house will have a, should have a, a different colored door from the one next door so that again it's immediately starting to be building these layers layers of quality and character so we've talked about everything strategically from green corridors and spine streets right down to front door color and it's all really you know, considered to be positive um, for this development um, so we can go on to the last slide so this is this is the end of the presentation um, and, and so just to recap is that the, the indicative master plan which we've put back up on the screen now um, is considered to create a cohesive and um, well-designed green and healthy place that's positively linked to the existing community um, of, of Pentlegare. It accords with the local development plan um, and our, re our adopted residential design guide. The par parameters plans that I've showed you um, set an inappropriate level of fix and flexibility to create this new place without stifling um, you know, create creativity of, of ideas that might come up that we haven't even thought about. We've got these basic fundamentals in place. Um, and then finally, this initial reserve matters phase that I've been showing you on the screen just, just most recently, accords with those outline parameters and all the various guidance and requirements um, to be, you know, the first, you know, but first phase of a high quality new um, place. So in that sense, it's fully supported on um, placemaking grounds. Um, and I hope this presentation has helped to kind of explain that placemaking process from this outline, stra outline strategy right down to the detail of the houses. Um, and I'll hand back to Andrew then, just for the sort of other parts of the assessment. Okay, thank you. Thank, thanks, Steve. Much, Andrew? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Thank you, Chair. Um, before I finish the presentation, as I said, uh, I would just like to reiterate that there have been approximately 700 objections made in response to this application. <coughs> Excuse me. They are summarised in the committee report, and we have a bit of objections from the local ward member and Pentlegair Community Council. Uh, the comments are summarised and addressed in the report, but key issues include site-wide concerns about the principle of development, 
highways, active travel, education, air quality and noise concerns, wildlife and trees, heritage, general site considerations and infrastructure, and um, comments and issues with the phase one layout. Um, so members are aware, consultation has been undertaken with various consultees as outlined in section five of the report, including, for example, internally highways, pollution control, drainage, placemaking and heritage, housing, strategic planning, education, ecology, arboricultural officer, the landscape officer, public right of way officer, parks, commons registration, uh, the invasive non-native species officer and the beyond bricks and mortar team and externally with bodies such as natural resources wales cadu welsh government transport welsh government land nature and forestry division uh, Dwyr Cymru welsh water Glamorgan gwent archaeological trust the coal authority wales and west utilities sport wales police design and crime officer and the mid and west wales fire service so the proposals have been amended since submission and various issues raised have been addressed in the revised information which has been reconsulted on uh, it should be stressed that there be no objections to the amended proposals from these consultees uh, and the application is recommended for approval subject to conditions and the section 106 legal agreement just giving some headline issues just so so people are, are clear uh, in terms of affordable housing, uh, again, there is 20% provision across the site in accordance with uh, the LDP requirement, uh, and it would be a 70-30 split, uh, social rented to intermediate. Again, housing officer is, is satisfied with this. In terms of the school, so as explained in the, the report, uh, the site would be large enough to accommodate a three form entry school. But what the applicant would be providing is a two and a half form entry school on the ground large enough so it could be expanded in the future. This is explained in the report, but in summary, the site would generate a demand for a two and a half form entry school, so we couldn't acquire anything more than this um, when considering both the primary and secondary education, and those contributions would be pooled. Um, so it would be future proofed. The school would be provided in two phases with a nursery unit by unit 250 and the two and a half form entry school by unit 500. Um, obviously, in terms of highways, there are various trigger points, as I've already outlined, for the various accesses. Um, concerns have been, you know, comments have been received on the access from Bryn Ross Crescent. Uh, this access was identified in the Statement of Common Ground as part of the LDP examination and has always been intended as the access to phase 1A. Notwithstanding this, the applicant has submitted a transport statement to ensure that it's acceptable, which has been considered uh, by the highways officers and they would agree with this. Um, in terms of future construction um, traffic, uh, for all phases, a construction environment management plan condition is also recommended in the report uh, and we could consider this as part of traffic routes as part of uh, this condition and their impact on the local environment. Um, as I said, we, we do have the various trigger points in section 7.27 for the planning obligations, but just to reiterate on the public open space, we've got two pitches and a pavilion, one neighbourhood equipped area of play, three local equipped areas of pay, play, ten local areas of play, one BMX track, allotments, natural open space and other trim trails. So there is, uh, we do consider this facilities for all on this site. Uh, yeah, and the key trigger points for the various planning obligations are included in section 7.27 in the report. So the officer recommendation is for approval, subject to conditions and section 106 agreement. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. Um, before we've got the agent who wishes to address this next, uh, but Councillor Des Thomas, you have your hand up. No. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Yeah, for, for, for future, when you're taking members of the committee's question, local member that comes oh, first. And they, oh, yeah. 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 Okay, I'll drop you down. Okay. Thank right, you. Uh, sorry, okay. We have uh, Big Sally, is the agent, who got five minutes to address this, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. There we are. Uh, as already mentioned by officers in the comprehensive committee report and the presentation of photos which clearly show the relevant aspects of the site, the site is allocated as one of the strategic sites in the recently adopted LDP. The LDP was subject to significant scrutiny by members throughout the preparation process and by the plan inspector at examination ha and has been found sound. The committee report states that the strategic sites have the greatest potential to contribute to the LDP's vision and objectives 
and deliver well-being and sustainable development. Uh, the proposed development complies with the three key LDP policies applicable to this scheme, PS2, SD2 and SD3. Extensive pre-application discussions have been held with the planning authority, which informed the master planning process at the earlier stages. Since submission, the applicant has refined the proposals in response to officer comments to ensure the scheme accords with the council's placement and objectives for the site, as set out by Mr. Smith in his presentation. The committee report states that there has been a significant element of transport analysis undertaken, and this is consistent with the inputs and outcomes of the Swansea strategic transport model. The analysis shows that without the proposed development, traffic growth has the potential to cause significant disruption to the surrounding highway network, and delivery of the proposed Spine Street and other highway mitigation measures allows the effects of the development to be absorbed, resulting in highway conditions which are an improvement on the current state. As such, there are no objections on highways grounds from the Council or Welsh Government. A significant amount of work has been undertaken on green infrastructure to incorporate a substantial amount of additional green verges, hedge boundaries, tree planting and build outs within the street scene. These proposals have served to significantly improve the sense of place created within these built up areas and will increase opportunities to achieve biodiversity gain. The scheme will include a significant amount of public open space in the form of two full size sports pitches with pavilion changing rooms, one neighbourhood equipped area of play, two locally equipped areas of play and 10 local areas of play. Multi-use games area, BMX bike track, allotments, informal green space, active travel routes and a significant amount of informal walking and cycling routes. The proposed development delivers a com policy compliant 20% affordable housing across the site, which will enable 37 local families to access affordable homes in the first phase and 170 local families to access affordable homes across the whole site. A Welsh language action plan has been produced, which sets out the benefits of the scheme to the Welsh language including Welsh forming a compulsory subject in the new primary school, affordable housing ensuring a wide range of housing stock for all families, liaising with a community group, Mentor Iaith Abertawa, which operates Welsh medium play groups in the Pentlegaid ward, all street names and signage being in Welsh, and the use of bilingual literature and signage in the marketing of the site. Energy conservation measures are incorporated into individual buildings to reduce energy demand, and the various measures outlined in the energy assessment identify a reduction in site-wide CO2 emissions of nearly 5% over and above building regs. Further, there are no objections on education, design, trees, landscaping, ecology, water quality, drainage, flood risk, archaeology and cultural heritage, agricultural land, noise or air quality from within the council or external technical consultees. A section 106 agreement will be signed to secure, amongst other matters, 20% affordable housing, a nursery and primary school or payment of circa £9 million of financial contributions to education, a financial contribution to highways and off-site highways improvements in the local vicinity, financial contributions for air quality monitoring and bridleway gates, active travel links, transfer of buildings for community, for community use and a commitment to the Council's Beyond Bricks and Mortar programme. In addition to the above, a number of indirect benefits will arise as a result of the development as set out in the brochure submitted by the applicant this week. Construction costs for the whole project is in excess of £130 million, supporting the local supply chain to spend with local subcontractors and suppliers. The scheme would generate over 900 direct jobs, Bellway employees and subcontractors, 450 to 700 indirect jobs through the supply chain, 870 to 1,000 induced jobs in the wider economy and a potential Wales land transaction tax receipt of £2.3 million. In conclusion, the proposals will help deliver the aims and objectives of the LDP to one of the strategic sites by delivering much needed homes, including affordable homes for 170 local families, a new nursery and primary school and significant public open space, green infrastructure and highways improvements. There are no objections from technical consultees and members are therefore respectfully requested to approve the application. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, next speaker then is the local member, Councillor Fitzgerald, and you have your five minutes as well. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me at least? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm afraid you can't see me, which may be a blessing. Um, well, I, I've sat here and listened to everything today and I'm beginning to think I, I'm here on a false mission because it seems we're going to have paradise in earth in Pentagair. Um, However, I'm here to represent my, uh, shall I say, disillusioned and embittered community because, you see, back in 2007, 
um, at the UDP public inquiry, they were told when the council made their statement that uh, Park Ma was going to be saved because the council said at that time that um, this site, which had been put forward for 250 houses, um, was not a site that should be uh, developed. It was an admission site. And the council's words were the allocated site at Thruellen Road and the admission site Park Mower display a number of similarities. However, the physical and visual impact of the Park Mower site would be far greater. It would also lead to pressure to develop more adjoining land uh, impacting on the character and setting of the settlement and surrounding countryside. So here we are, 850 houses, not 250, when the community thought Park Bar was safe for the future. So it's not surprising that in my ward, trust and confidence in this council is completely shattered. Now, what I want to draw your attention to, committee, is that we are talking about building on quality agricultural land. Now, this has been this has been skipped over, avoided, omitted. There is nothing in the report that says anything about Grade Three A agricultural land, of which there are forty four acres because Grade 3 agricultural land is amongst the best and most versatile planning policy Wales, edition 10, and should be conserved as a finite resource for the future. And considerable weight should be given to protecting such land from development because of its special importance. Ignored, completely omitted, no reference at all in the 198 uh, page document, plenty of other references and detailed references to, to other policies. So, um, you know, we're, we're destroying now at, at a time when we're in a pandemic, when we need to be uh, growing more local, we're destroying grade 3A agricultural land and the rest of it, grade 3B, which is also of agricultural value. I'm going to just move on quickly to the roads. I'm hoping I'm going to have enough time. Um, it, it, it's, it's quite interesting and a little bizarre what has been said this morning because let's remind ourselves that originally this site, the 850 houses, was predicated on the delivery of a strategic relief road. Now, why was this road deemed necessary? because of the problems at Junction 47. Now, we hear about Newport and all the issues there, but there has been 78% increase in traffic at Junction 47 since the early 2000s. So a relief road was something that was believed was important to deal with this situation. But everything we hear now Oh, it's a spine street, 20% um, speed limit, and it's going to have houses along it. And essentially, what is being said by both the council and Bellway, all these houses, plus all the other houses down the road in Kingsbridge, etc., won't have any impact on Junction 47. What a joke. Let me remind you what Jacob said, the consultant employed by the Welsh Government. It said that and this is in relation to the Spine Street, it follows a rather tortuous alignment in the context of a residential distributor with a direct and viable alternative to existing routes. As such, its attraction as an alternative to travelling via Junction 47 is questionable. So don't try and tell us in Pentlegare that building 850 houses isn't going to impact on Junction 47 because not everyone living on the site is going to want to go into Swansea to work. The chances are they'll be working along the M4 corridor. So um, it, it's a little bit disillusioning because even Arab, the council's um, consultants for transport, has commented that 
LGPD yeah. developments will have a significant adverse impact on traffic delay, traffic congestion, air quality, noise, and economic disbenefits because of all the housing that is proposed. Um, I should remind members too that there's a couple no, of. Sir. Councillor, could you begin to wind up now, please? Yes, okay. Uh, page 1A um, access via Brinbos Crescent. We were told limited access and it would not be uh, linked to any part of the other, uh, the remainder of the development. Gone out the window. This is a material change. There will be permanent, permanent access. Anyone now coming from um, Tierkoid, uh, Pontlou, can drive up Swansea Road, go to Brinross Crescent, join the Spine Street, and it can become a rat worm into Swansea. So I'm afraid. I don't believe it says in the document that um, ev everything that um, is going to be delivered as in phase 1A um, is, is obviously the houses. Um, Councillor, you've got eight minutes now. Could okay, you... right. Okay, I know I'm wasting my time, so there we are. Okay, fine, forget it. Not wasting your time. I think so. Okay, thank you. I've got uh, three speakers already. I've got Councillor Des Thomas first. Um, the, in, in, sorry, I should say in um, Councillor Fitzgerald's submission, she did request that um, we defer and have a site visit as we'll test that as soon as possible. Councillor Des Thomas first. What, what are people's thoughts? Does anyone want to move anything there? No? Councillor Thomas? Moving a site visit now. Councillor Thomas? Okay, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, excuse if my uh, questions are a little dysfunctional. I made some uh, reading through the report yesterday and some this morning. Um, who's, can I ask a couple of questions? Whose concept is this? Is this the planning department's concept or is it Bellway's concept? Um, of course, this site was, is on the LDP list of sites which we went through as a planning department and the council um, a couple of years ago. Um, the the report does make uh, interesting reading. I mean, I, I must admit, I did have a smile at um, the item on page 80, 92, no more than 186 units shall communicate with the public sewer. I hope they have a good conversation in that, but uh, we are. On to... Um, um, Mid and West Wales Fire Authority. I'm a member of that, so I obviously picked up my um, my interest on that. An adequate water supply should be on site. Can we have the the assurance on that, please? The local members' submission stated that um, 850 homes is a vast development, and yet she was happy to increase the the thousand homes in Valindra to 2,000. So I just wonder what her adjective would be for the for a 2000 home development. Um, a lot of um, work has gone into the details, meter cabinets, garages, front doors, um, exclusion of fiberglass canopies, all to be welcomed on new developments. Affordable housing. Um, can we have the assurance that these will be pepper potted around the, the development and not clustered? Um, an awful example of this is a recent um, application which we've given permission for, which is the Sumlin Lane application in Newton. If you go into there, the development is very nice, detached houses, green spaces, and a little development like a, like a muse off, which is the, um, the the affordable housing, completely unacceptable in you know in this in this day and age. I'm not happy with all Welsh road science. I think it should be at least be 50-50. And then if we can come on to the, um, onto the Spine Street itself. Now, part of the report says a Spine Street will provide much needed capacity relief for the M4 Junction 47 and the strategic network. But I think it was Steve who said this morning, this is not a bypass and, um, and the rest of it. Can someone tell me why we shouldn't put a blanket 20 mile an hour limit on the whole development 
and even Brindworth Crescent and that, and that area around there to, to, to keep the, the speed of traffic down. I can't understand why anyone would wish to go from a dual carriageway system onto a, this residential area for, as a shortcut. But I think we could um, control that with a 20 mile an hour zone. Um, I want my last one. Chimneys, are chimneys necessary in this day and age? <coughs> is it, uh, or is it just to add to the character, or, or are they functional? Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. And go Councillor Mary Jones. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a few points I'd like to make. Uh, the first one, um, uh, first of all, I must thank both Andrew and Steve uh, for actually uh, explaining the report. It did take some reading and rereading, and I'm still not sure I got uh, everything out of it, but with all the uh, presentations this morning, it did make it a lot easier. Uh, my first point is about the school, and it's uh, not the nursery, the main school. It's the uh, after Unit 500 or House 500. Now, this seems to be, a, you know, a long time in the future when we know for a fact that Pentlegare Primary is under pressure at the moment. And um, I was promised a new school for Hendra uh, Student Village site. Never got my new school and I'd be lucky to get two classrooms which are proposed. Now, what I'm concerned about is the length of time after the 500 uh, house because you have to have planning permission, you've got to go, uh, you've got to build it, and it probably won't be finished for years and years. And I think that should be brought forward uh, to a you know a far greater, uh, like after the nursery, say, start on the primary school. I do have concerns over us building on agricultural land, as the ward member has said. When we did the LDP, and yes, I went on the site visit for that, and I did agree, we didn't have Brexit then. We didn't have uh, the coronavirus where we've had you know, problems with the supply chain. We need to think more about growing our own crops, which has been uh, in the news quite a lot, because we cannot rely on uh, the European Union for uh, good deals. So things have changed quite radically since uh, the LDP. My other question is about drainage. I've read the, and I did pick up on Councillor Thomas's point as well about conversations about 184 houses. But I mean, we have got climate change. There's no good getting away from it. We are having flooding and it is quite severe. And the actual report, I'm sorry, doesn't explain it to me in layman's terms how you are actually going to manage. I know we've got to get SEDS approval and SAB and all these, but actually I need to know a lot more because there is flooding on Gorse Common at the moment. There are uh, schemes there, I believe. So I think we need to know a lot more about the drainage. Two quick questions. The road, it doesn't say if they're going to be adopted or managed. And also we've said a lot about trees. And again, this is from personal experience in my own uh, ward. The trees you put in people's gardens, please make sure they are suitable size for the garden because a lot of gardens these days are quite small and when you've got the washing lines, barbecues and young children, there's not very much room left if you've got a large tree. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Will Evans. Can you unmute? Can you unmute, please, Will? Right, OK. Thank there you, Chair. Are. First Thank of you. all, in relation to Councillor Fitzgerald's question on Grade 3 agricultural land, I'd be very interested to have the officer's response to that. Um, the site itself is a strategic development. Oh, some interference then, sorry. The site itself is a strategic development area which was adopted uh, in the Swansea Local Development Plan on 28th of February this year. <laughs> Uh, it it uh, joins my ward, which is Kingbridge, where there is also a, a strategic site where there's 750 houses. And I must say, I have got major concerns regarding the um, capacity of the roads infrastructure in the general area of Pentlegare joining the M4. Oh. Um, in relation to the report, uh, I noticed that there are no tree preservation orders on at the moment. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, in relation to TAN 10, when will the tree surveys be carried out? And also, 
It is mentioned on page 74 of a BAT survey having been done, but that needs to be updated. So when will these things be done? In relation to the Spine Street, uh, you mentioned a 20 mile an hour speed limit, but that's got to be enforced and it's not easy these days to get proper enforcement required for people to comply with the law. Um, on that question, will there be, for example, a weight restriction put on other than for access? Again, that adds problems with the enforcement side of it, but if we're going to get uh, heavy goods vehicles, for instance, traveling through this spine road to join the A4, A484, um, then there could be problems. So those are the sort of issues I want answers to today. Um, I'll leave it there for the moment, but I may come back later with a further question. Thank okay. You. Well, thank you. Councillor Linda Tyler Lloyd, then next. Could you unmute as well, please, Linda? Am I unmuted now? Yeah, anyway, well, thank you. Right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, I I have concerns because I agree with Councillor Fitzgerald about the, the land being top quality. And now that we've got the coronavirus, I'm thinking that we should be producing more in this country ourselves. So that's one concern. Um, also, the flooding, I, I agree with there. You know, I'd like to have more information about how they're going to manage the, the water system and the drainage. But also, I would be grateful if you could just talk me through again this BMX bike business, because that can cause an awful lot of problems. And I'm not sure where the, the bikes are going to be, you know, driven and if they're going to be affecting the houses with noise and, and that sort of thing. That's all. Thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor White. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, obviously, we've um, we, we've uh, under the, uh, the UDPLDP, we've got to uh, provide an additional sixteen thousand properties um, across the city. Um, they say it, it, it's not um, unusual in regards to big developments. So, in the past, if you look, for example, in Swansea, East and Morrison Park in Vada, that was obviously all fields at one stage, but now there's thousands of new houses there. The Maritime Quarter, again, that's a big development. So, as I say, this is unusual to Swansea. As I say, you know, there's been that we've got to provide these amount of houses. And also, I believe as well, um, it will, uh, it will, with, 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 with a development um, within the community, it will help the local people that are obviously living there, as stated earlier on, but the also people who wanted to, to downsize or, or young families that are obviously uh, that, that, are, that, that would want to that are young people that would want to stay and live in the communities where they were born and brought up. So I believe I believe it, it is important that we that we that we enhanced communities, you know, so uh, that that's what I certainly, certainly you know, want, want to endorse. Um, in regards to the 20% um, affordable housing, same as my colleague, Councillor Thompson said, um, if you can have the assurances of that the 20% affordable housing will be provided on, on the site, uh, and, you know, and I believe that's, that's essential. And also, uh, a few points I have in regards to um, page 41 within the highways of the uh, with, with the, the first Cymru of you know, being, you know, I'm sure if they want to perhaps go on to this first phase of the site to ride the service, I believe that they should really be, be you know, providing those facilities. You know, we said on with the report with the development that there will be uh, a proper bus route in there as well. So people are just uh, mustn't use car usage. Um, and also, what I'd like to ask as well, Chair, if possible, in regards to the the, uh, the retail and commercial uh, units to on this development, it went six four. In regards to the actual. Uh, Operating hours of, of it, uh, you know, staying at uh, 10 30 commercial. 
can perhaps be looked at. Perhaps we can, you know, in, have those hours shorter if possible. That's all I'd like to ask. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else? I can't see any other hands up. No? Did uh, Steve or Andrew, did you want to come back with anything? Andrew, you're on mute. Well, I just answered everything, so I hope that helps. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go through the comments as they were received from Councillor Fitzgerald, Councillor Thomas, uh, Councillor Mary Jones, Councillor Will Evans, Councillor Linda Tyler Lloyd, and Councillor White. I will leave the highway comments to Matt to respond to once I've picked up mine. And then I will ask Tom just to come in in terms of to explain the question from Councillor Tom, uh, Des Thomas, about the concept plan. Okay. So, in terms of the comments from Councillor Fitzgerald, obviously she's, she's referred to um, the 2007 UDP public inquiry. Uh, as is explained in the report, obviously the LDP uh, needs to be updated because it will ha always has a shelf life. Um, and we've undertaken an extensive, the you know, strategic policy team have undertaken an extensive assessment of all the candidate sites put forward as part of that process. Um, this site was identified then uh, and has been uh, proposed in as part of the LDP, which is the current development plan. So obviously, uh, by legislation, we have to go in accordance with the LDP unless material considerations indicate otherwise. Um, so it has been assessed. And as I said, that is covered on page, I think is page 119 of the report. In terms of building on quality agricultural land, the councillor said there's absolutely no reference in the report. Well, as I said, there is reference in the report several times, firstly to the objectors uh, and in terms of the response to that. So in, pay, in section 7.8, uh, page 118, paragraph one, um, that is referenced in terms of both what Planning Policy Wales, which acknowledges that grades uh, one, two and three A are the best and most versatile land. Um, that was considered as part of the LDP process and the examiner did bring that question up, but accepted that there wasn't sufficient brownfield land um, within the county to accommodate the future development needs and therefore there had to be a trade um, so that issue is addressed um, there will be a loss of I think it's um, uh, 18 hectares of grade uh, 3a land the site is clearly not all uh, best and most versatile agricultural land um, so that issue is addressed in the report um, I'll ask Matt to pick up on the highways question there about the relief road. Um, but what it is, we would, I would say at this point is obviously this Spine Street has a dual function. Um, it's got a purpose to provide relief uh, from the existing highway situation, but it's also got a function as a place. It's not going back to the old days of just having a bypass through there and, and development either side. So it's got a dual function. Uh, the highways officer is satisfied that it satisfies their requirements in terms of delivering uh, betterment to the existing highway situation and the placemaking officer is satisfied that it also acts as a place so we have questioned that um, councillor fitzgerald did refer to the jacobs uh, comments um, what should be noted is that the jacobs comments were uh, prepared on behalf of the welsh government transportation department um, ACOM, the uh, agents in terms of highway matters for Bellway, have responded comprehensively to that and this the holding objection was removed. Uh, the Welsh Government Transport don't have any objections to it. Um, going on to Councillor Thomas's questions uh, about the mid, as I said, I'll, I'll let Tom deal with the concept issue. In terms of the Mid and West Wales Fire Service, obviously we have got conditions on there about drainage. Uh, Dwyer Cymru, Welsh Water are satisfied that they, they're not objecting to the proposal subject to those conditions. Uh, in terms of pepper potting, yeah, we will ensure they are pepper potted throughout. Um, I'm going to briefly share my screen if I can, just to show uh, phase 1A. Um, so this is, this is phase 1A, I'm assuming everyone can see. Um, what you'll see are the red stars on properties, which are the affordable housing units. So in this phase, as I said, there are 37. Uh, there's a cluster there. Um, moving through the site, there's additional ones here. 
There's a cluster of five there and a cluster over here. So they are pepper potted throughout the site as far as we're concerned. The blue ones are intermediate properties as well. Um, so they are pepper potted through the site and the housing officer hasn't raised any objections with, with their location, basically. Uh, has no objections on that front. Um, the chimneys, are they necessary? As I said, that is something we have discussed um, in terms of the placemaking function. They do add some visual interest. I cannot confirm whether they're functional or not, or not if I'm honest, um, yeah, I'm afraid. Uh, but yeah, they do add interest to the street team. Um, in terms of Councillor Mary Jones's comments about uh, the school at Unit 500, it is appreciated that the existing school is at capacity at the moment. Um, what we've got to be aware of, obviously, in terms of capacity going forward, is obviously, you know, in terms of the contribution itself, uh, that's circa £9 million. So we've got to ex accept that the developer is going to cost money to develop the site. Uh, and needs time to recoup it. So it needs to be viable from their perspective in terms of when it is provided. These trigger points are actually in advance of the trigger points that were agreed as part of the LDP uh, statement of common ground. So they have been brought forward uh, in light of concerns from um, education. Colleagues in education aren't objecting to the proposals. I think they accept that from a placemaking perspective, we need the school in the right location at the right time. Uh, and they haven't offered any objections in that regard. In terms of timings, um, obviously the school needs to be provided by Unit 500, so the applicant would need to build in time if they are to deliver the school to get planning permission. Uh, as Steve said in his presentation, um, there have been discussions previously about the school with our education department. As you said, you would see the visuals of the school. It shows that there is dialogue already taking place. Uh, but further dialogue would be required. If we are given the contribution to um, procure the school ourselves, what you'll note in the trigger points is upon commencement of development, we would get 2.67% of the overall contribution, which is circa £240,000 to enable us to do the design feasibility and get to a stage where we can apply for planning permission ourselves. Um, as I said, in terms of building on agricultural land, that is, you know, this is a site that's allocated in the LDP and we have to um, consider it on that basis unless material considerations indicate otherwise. So we consider that to be acceptable. With regards to drainage and flooding, um, you'll note on page um, section 7.21 on page 165 of the report that According to the development advice maps, the site is considered to be at little or no risk of flooding. Um, you'll note also that uh, NRW and uh, the, the council's drainage officers haven't objected to the proposal. They have submitted an outline drainage scheme, but we have got conditions requiring uh, detail, further details of the site, both for phase 1A and the subsequent phases as a condition. Um, so they would be checked by our drainage officer. And we've also limited the rate of discharge from this site to 7.2 litres a hectare. I think it is or maybe 7.8. Uh, that is a condition on there, uh, which is actually uh, less than or equal to the existing situation. So with on-site storage, there would be betterment for the existing situation in terms of drainage and flooding. Um, Bellway have indicated that the road would be adopted. Um, obviously, I know councillors would prefer this. We can't insist on that. Um, but that is what they have indicated is their preference. Notwithstanding that, we have got a condition requiring details uh, of a maintenance and management plan until a time, such a time as they enter into a Section 38 agreement with a council to take on the adoption. Um, in terms of uh, uh, Councillor Will Evans's comments on in tree preservation off, um, tree preservation orders, uh, tree surveys have been submitted with the application. And it's something that the tree officer will look to, as they've done on the other strategic sites, look to an appropriate point to consider a tree preservation order. So some of it will be once the site is developed to ensure that new trees are protected going forward. Obviously, a lot of the trees will be in the public domain. Uh, in, you know, if they are adopted, they will be within council ownership and council control. You raised the query about the bat survey. Um, there is a requirement in the condition for the landscape and ecological management plan um, that requires all 
uh, surveys for birds and, and bats to be updated before any buildings are demolished. So that is covered in terms of uh, going forward to ensure that the buildings subject to demolition will have appropriate surveys before they are demolished. And obviously they are subject to um, separate legislation in any event. Um, so I think I've addressed the concerns or the comments in terms of Councillor Linda uh, Tyler Lloyd about agricultural land and flooding. Um, in terms of the BMX bike track, Ian, do you mind putting the presentation back on just to the final uh, slide and I'll show where that is, please. It's the final slide. So, yeah, exactly where, where Ian is pointing to there. That is where the bike track will go. So, as you said, it's not in particular close proximity to any houses in terms of noise and disturbance, um, but will hopefully offer, offer a great facility for uh, the children and, and young adults in the area, or anyone, I suppose, uh, going forward. Finally, Thank in you. terms of Councillor White's comments about the opening hours of the retail and commercial, obviously this is in a, a commercial area. Um, we have discussed the opening hours with the applicant, uh, and they've indicated their preference, and we consider the hours that are proposed are commensurate with other sort of local provision. Um, so we, as officers, consider those hours acceptable. It has been considered, uh, has been discussed with the applicant, uh, and we're satisfied that they're acceptable. But obviously, members are entitled to have a different view. So I'll hand over to uh, Matt, if that's okay, to comment on any highways issues. Yeah, okay, thank you. Matt? Uh, yes, um, can, Yeah, uh, Go on. Councillor Mary Jones, you can come back after if you don't mind while we get the responses. Matt? Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, there's been a, a huge amount of transport work has gone on um, with regard to this application um, over the last couple of years and in response to uh, Welsh Government's initial objections. A load more. Um, I suppose questions really relating to the Spine Street and how effective it'll be in relieving capacity for the M4. Um, what all the analysis shows is that without the development, increases in background traffic at Junction 47 will become unsustainable. Uh, the development provides an alternative relief route in the area and so it mitigates against its own impact and also provides benefit. Uh, in terms of the use of the relief road and its makeup, there's been a lot of discussion about what form the road should be. You know, should it be a 50 mile an hour dual carriageway? Should it be as is a road designed so it can function as a place as well, a mixture of 20, 30 and probably even 50 on the lower section where it comes out of the development. Um, there's a phenomenon called uh, latent demand. And um, what that essentially means is, is that infrastructure can itself generate traffic. So if the road is of too great a form, the road will itself encourage more drivers through Pentlegare, which obviously is something which we don't want. We want the road to provide strategic relief to 47, access to the development, but not in itself form another main road. Um, Manual for Streets suggests that uh, roads can have multi multi-function roads, can uh, have active frontage, uh, which is houses along it, lower speed limits for flows of up to about 10,000 vehicles a day, uh, which we would be well below in and still provide benefit to Junction 47. Uh, it's worth also noting that uh, obviously the LDP has several strategic development areas. Uh, these development areas all have their own different financial contributions and the development in Kingsbridge, which is a bit further through the process than this one, has a contribution in there for an improvement to Junction 47, which involves re-signalling it, uh, signals on the A483, which currently is unsignalled, roundabout marking modifications, etc. Um, and the result of all of that is, in broad terms, once all the LDP is built out, with the Spine Street in place, with the improvements offered by Strategic Development Area B, Junction 47 would operate no worse than it does at the moment and probably better. Uh, Councillor Todd asked about speed limits. Uh, I can see no reason why there can't be a blanket 20 mile an hour on all the development roads. That seems to make sense to me. Uh, roads for adoption. Yes, as, as uh, Andrew said, there's no, the developer doesn't have to offer them adoption, but all the roads proposed are of a form that we would consider adopting them if offered. Uh, weight restriction and HGVs, uh, Councillor Evans. Yeah, I mean, 
obviously the intention would be that HGVs would remain on the, the major routes, the major road. If there is an issue with HGVs trundling through the development, then that's obviously something that's fairly easy to implement to keep the HGVs where we'd like them. Um, Councillor White asked about First Cymru. From the information we've had from the applicant, First Cymru are very keen to service the development when they can get through it. So that what that means is as soon as we hit, is it 385 units, Andrew, when the A483 access comes on? As soon as they hit that trigger point, First Cymru are chomping at the bit to get a bus through the development because they see it's a commercial service and they think they can make money doing it. Uh, in the early phases, they would rather service it from existing bus stops. Uh, the existing bus stops are within an acceptable walking distance. They're all within 400 metres. Uh, and the travel plan, which we will monitor should I get permission, does give us the opportunity to draw down on further contributions, whether they be in terms of money or things like bus passes, if the mode splits are not where we think they should be. So that to give members some comfort that uh, we can then we can sort of nudge people towards public transport through uh, financial contributions. And I think that's covered everything. Unless yes. anyone else has any more. Tom, did you want to come in now? Yes, could I just um, could I just come in on the um, uh, councillor Thomas's question in 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 relation to you know who whose concept is um uh, this this proposal well i it it is useful just to um reaffirm really that you know fundamentally a, as a planning authority we had a very clear vision uh, for these strategic sites and uh, more widely for uh, place making and the creation of new neighborhoods of scale being at the heart of the um, of the LDP, um, obviously a, an approach that was um, uh, endorsed by uh, by members through the adoption of the plan last year. Uh, we we worked with site promoters. However, it was a collaborative process to ensure that our uh, concept plans that are set out within each site specific policy within the LDP. Uh, were based on um, uh, proposals that were deliverable uh, by uh, which, whichever uh, 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 site promoter was was on board with um, with 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 the, the, the relevant strategic site. In this case, of course, uh, Bellway Homes. So it was uh, uh, say fundamentally we we knew what we wanted to achieve on the site uh, on on this site, it, it, and it wasn't to be a small extension of 100 houses or so um, to the existing uh, estates in the area. It was all about uh, creating uh, a, a new neighbourhood part of, of Pentlegare um, to in, in, enhance the area and deliver all the infrastructure and supporting uses that go hand in hand with the, um, with the residential elements. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, I've got a few uh, other councillors want to come back in now. Councillor Jones. Yeah, thank you. My question wasn't answered. The trees, and it is important because I know uh, we put TPOs on trees and then they've had to come back to committee to ask us um, if they can be, the trees can be removed. So it is really important. I know that the developer actually says they'll put the trees and we sort of just say yes. I think we need to give more consideration to the types of trees we're putting in people's properties. And I think it, you know, it is an important point from my perspective. Thank you. Okay, yeah. okay thank you. Uh, Councillor Gibbard. Uh, thank you, Chair. I apologise to the committee for, for joining late um, and as a result I did miss a lot of the presentation so um, I don't think it would be right of me to, to vote so I um, so just went to make that point but um, I did have some concerns which other councillors have raised um, so thank you for that but I just wanted to clarify um, what Andrew was saying about the building of the school um, could it potentially come, happen sooner if the council develops it with contributions from the developer rather than them. I wasn't quite sure. I missed exactly what you said about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Come back to that. Okay. Mr. Thomas. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, um, j just a clear up of Mr. Boyer's um, answer to my previous question. Did he say he was happy with the concept of a blanket 20 mile an hour or not happy? 
if he's, you know, bearing in mind the Welsh government are now looking at um, 20 mile an hour limits for residential areas, this seems appropriate that the, the, the whole site should be covered with a 20 mile an hour limit, yeah. including the area around Brynros Close yeah. and, uh, you know, which will be the entrance to the site. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, more than happy with the 20 mile hour limit through it, Councillor. More than happy, thank you. If, if, the, if that's the case, I'd like that added as a condition. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, my last one is Councillor Anderson. Yeah, uh, my question, uh, Chair, is to Matt. Um, with retail, will we be having delivery restrictions on times uh, that they deliver to the shops, uh, the retail shops? Uh, it's certainly something we could look at. That is would form part of the Reserve Matters application, I would imagine, wouldn't it, Andrew? Moved again, Andrew. Moved again. <laughs> right. You've moved it. Moved it yourself again, Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> Sorry. Apologies again. Um, there, there is a condition. Thanks, Matt. Sorry. There is a condition in terms of uh, deliveries uh, on the outline consent. So all the commercial units would need to uh, agree um, delivery protocols. Obviously, as part of uh, the reserve matter submission, we would need to ensure that there's suitable space for deliveries and things like that. So that is something that uh, is captured at this stage, but would also be considered uh, at a subsequent stage. Um, in terms of uh, Councillor Jones' comment, apologies, I, I completely missed the one about the trees, so apologies for that. Um, we have consulted with the Council's landscape officer and the tree officer in regards to the trees proposed, and neither have raised any objections with regards to the landscaping scheme. Um, so it has been included for phase 1A. Uh, future phases would be considered at, the, at that stage, basically. Um, in terms of Councillor Gibbard's query, um, if we are to develop the school, we have agreed trigger points with the um, with both education and the applicant that we consider appropriate. Um, but we would get the final payment by unit 400. So in all likelihood, it's unlikely that the school would be provided much earlier than the unit 500 if we were to develop the site ourselves, um, unless we had everything in place and were ready to go on it. Um, but that is unlikely. So as I said, it, it's it was phased, uh, it was agreed in terms of ensuring that um, it was viable for the applicant, but also ensuring that we had sufficient funds to make sure that the school is provided by the same trigger point. Okay, thank, thank you all. Any other members? No, I can't see any hands up there. No? Anyone want to speak? No? Okay, thank you very much. And um, well, I must say what a very thorough presentations some excellent questions and uh, responses from the officers. And um, we've heard from the applicant and from the local member as well. And uh, well, as I say, I'm quite impressed with everything this, uh, with this morning at all. But now is the chance where we uh, move to a vote, uh, bearing in mind that this has been uh, referred to the Welsh Government as well. But we can make a decision in the sense of how we would vote. Uh, yeah should it be with us. So unless anyone else wants to speak, we will now move to a vote. And um, we'll ask Gareth to uh, call the names if you want, please. Of 20 mile an hour. Punting. Sorry? Yes? Yes, with the 20 mile an hour blanket. Blanket Can, mile an hour. Sorry. Can, I, can I just cut... Cut in yeah. here, please, Chair. Yeah. Uh, with, with regard to the 20 mile an hour um, issue, obviously there are various roads throughout the site linking down to the uh, south, down to the A484. Um, whilst highways may have no objection to it, and, and that's fine, I don't have a, an objection to it from a planning perspective, uh, I don't consider that including it would meet the relevant tests of a condition. Um, so highways would have control over that in the future, subject to separate legislation. Um, so that is something that could be done, but I don't feel it would uh, comply with the necessary tests or is reasonable or necessary from a planning perspective. But notwithstanding that, I completely appreciate what you say, Councillor Thomas. We would have control over that in the future. Can I, the, well, the issue uh, is, is the funding of... Um, 
you know, if this is going to add a, a cost to the highways department in the future, then, you know, I, I wouldn't agree with that. It should be part of the overall application and the developer should pay the full costs for achieving this. Can I jump in, Councillor? Yeah, the developer will pay the cost for achieving this as part of their Section 38 agreement. We have to technically approve all the drawings and all the layouts and the speed limits and everything else. So it's it, it would be within the within the gift of the council to insist on that. OK, thank you. And the surrounding the, the Brindos Crescent area as well, you know, it would encompass yeah. all that area. OK, uh, Jonathan, you have your hand up. Jonathan. Yep. <laughs> Apologies. Sorry. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Just to add in to Councillor Thomas's query, the 20 mile an hour could also be uh, action through a traffic regulation order, which is also controlled by the Council. Uh, and as part of that process, the developer would meet the cost of implementing that traffic regulation order, if that's what uh, highways uh, agree for their streets. Thank you. Yeah, I, under I understand the process we would have to go through. But what I'm concerned in is, is the the, the cost of the the order sh should be met by the developer, not the council. Yes, that that was the that is the way it works. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, with that okay. understanding, then. Yeah, you're happy. Yeah, so we will add that condition. Everyone in favour no, of that? No, don't okay. Don't, okay. Just, All right. no, sorry, sorry. Tell me too. All right. So just just to be clear, chair, we're talking yeah. about a twenty mile an hour zone. So the zone, Councillor Thomas. Uh, uh, would be the the whole site as it is, including Bread Ross. So, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Not a condition. It's not. But it's, it's not now. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we. Sorry, Are we approving the principle? That the mind to approve. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. So we will now, unless anyone else wishes to speak, we will now go to the vote. We are minded to either approve or refuse the application. I'm now ready, go. Yeah. When you're ready, we will go to the vote. So this is a I'll ask members now to vote on the, the recommendation. It is minded to approve subject to the Welsh Government call in. So Councillor Sir Lanson. Approved, Chair. Yeah. Uh Councillor Peter Brack is not present. He's, no. Uh Councillor Will Evans. Approve. Councillor Gibbard. Um, I'll have to abstain. Councillor Mary Jones. Approve. Councillor Mike Lewis. Approve. Richard Lewis not present. No. Is Paulette. Uh, Councillor Des Thomas. I am minded to approve. <laughs> Councillor Linda Tyler Lloyd. Can't hear you, sorry. Can't hear you, Linda. Abstain. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Mike White. Approve. And Councillor Paula. I approve. So that's seven, four, and two abstained. Seven, four, and two abstained. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you all for this morning and your contributions. Much appreciated. Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank all the Thank you, Chair. Well Thank, you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I know. Stop recording.